not that I love the anguish that I go through before every game, uh, but to know that there's, there's a win or a loss. It's not an exhibition game, it's, the, it's real. And uh, for us to go, the anxieties of it, right, only make you better, and the, uh, the, the preparation only makes you better. So we were, uh, we were pleased that, especially in our second half, the way we defended. Uh, they have the, with the new dribble drive rule, which is a good rule, and with the, um, just their ability, their quickness to get underneath us and to drive the ball, we had to play really solid team defense. And that first, that start of the second half was really, really good for us because it got us into, got, got us some space that we could play from there. So if you look at, I think their DER was like .61. And, uh, you know, it, we, we should be beating the team like that. But uh, you can also, if you don't play defense, they can sneak up and get you. So it was really good that we defended so, defended so hard, defended with enthusiasm, defended well. Chris? It seemed like Aubrey had an efficient game. Yeah. Yeah, talk about his play. That's what we just talked about, how efficient it was. He didn't have to force anything. Um, he had, he's making more plays like he never would have busted out of the break. Uh, he made a two-on-one play that he – Blew up in practice yesterday. He watched the video with us today, and then he made it perfect today. So there's the application that we, we stress with all our guys. How are you going to apply what we're learning every day, and how soon can you do it? So that was that was good. And he's six rebounds. That's something he wasn't doing last year. We're encouraging him. You know, unless the the guard is underneath it or, or the shot comes from the corner by a guard, you're on the backboard. Left. Coach, was the decision to play Mo, Mo Wagner uh, made during the game? And what went into yeah, it was. I was just going to go with We had talked, we've had a lot of talk about this. And he is, you know, with the way things are today in the fifth year, you know, it's not like it used to be. In the fifth year, sometimes he might not be playing with you or, or he might be somewhere else. So let's just, I really wanted to see him in a game. And I love what we saw. He was active, he's got a motor. Um, he's got some things he's got to work on. He, he doesn't have the strength to be to do the way he'd like to in the Big Ten yet. But um, that's what we're going to work on in, in, in the in-between sessions the best we can without inhibiting his ability to play the next game. We're having to play all those games last year without cameras. When, when you see him out there, I guess just in terms of what all the different things he can yeah. do. Uh, Dawkins said, you know, irreplaceable was the word he said. To actually see him back out there, just what is, how would you kind of quantify the difference of having him on the floor? Well, you don't, you just don't have to have this play card that is like trying to dial things up all the time. He's just going to make plays in space when either it's a transition, which he was really good in today, or he'll opt out of an offensive set because he needs to because they played it a certain way. So he, he sees the floor well. His passing ability is way underrated, and you know we like to have the ball in his hand. So that, that's just I wouldn't say I'm, I'm less relaxed, but it's not like you're you're racking your brain trying to find ways to score. He he helps you a lot in that area. Your length affecting so much on the defense. A lot of that being him and that wingspan, yeah. things like that. On the other side of the floor, just what's yeah. the difference? I mean, with, with the the whole length that we have out there, I mean that's that's huge for us to be able to, you know, just as you wall up people, as they go down the line, you need to be like this. And those hands, if they're out, they make a big difference. And seeing over a ball screen, a guy comes off a ball screen, you stick your hands up, it blows up a lot, especially if he's six feet and you're six, seven. So it's, it's, it's something we've got to play to it and probably do it even when we play more zone in the future. Swing over here to Noah, Coach. Um, how'd you think Spike did? I know you were trying to keep yeah, his minutes Yeah, it was good. Control. I wanted to push him. You can't push him for 10 minutes in there. But you could see he was he was laboring, right after after the second half after, after five. That's why I wanted to get him out for two or three and throw him right back in there. That made another step for him. He needs to shoot the ball when he's open. So when you talk to him, tell him to shoot when he's open, okay? But he's got to shoot instead of trying to do some other things. He's, a, he's an incredible shooter, and he needs to do that. But other than that, it was good to have him out here. Chris. Cam quietly had some pretty good numbers in the first half. Talk about some of his cuts and yeah. letting things come to him. Yeah, you know, he's he's trying to still understand how he can really effectively help his team. And it, it's ways probably that he wouldn't be in his in his high school days. So it is, it is there he's looking for people. Pass, like he, he threw a pass to Mark underneath today. That was a big, big play for us. He just is, he's, he's got this sense for the game. Now he's just got a channel in all in the right direction.
And he won't, I don't think he's going to have to guard a six foot um, four man again. That is, that is really quick. So that was, a, that was the issue why DJ played a lot too, is that on the perimeter, Cam guarding the guard is not, a, is not a great matchup sometimes. Let's swing over to Sean. John, obviously you're not completely healthy yet, but you, you clearly got a lot of pieces. Can you talk about the process of fitting all this together and then how much fun that might be for you? Yeah, it, it is much more difficult than I thought, Sean that as we're waiting for the team to get 100% healthy, it's more difficult because, and with more pieces. Last year, it actually was pretty simple after we had the injuries, right? We only got seven or eight guys, this is what we're gonna do, and now you're trying to figure out what's the best way moving forward. Who, what, what personalities, what uh, talent level, what position play is evolving? And it's evolving every day. But then all of a sudden, Zach Irvin can come into the mix any day now is our hope, and all of a sudden now that dynamic changes. So it's going to make us better. It's my job to make sure it makes makes us better. But I wouldn't call it fun yet. You know, it, it is good when we can get the best teams still are going to have eight or nine people in a good rotation.